God, we come this morning with grateful hearts. Praise us on our lips and thanksgiving in our hearts to give you the honor and the glory and the praise that you are so worthy of. Oh God, you're worthy of all adoration, all honor, and all glory, and all praise. And Father, as I stand before these, your precious people this morning, Lord, I empty myself of self that the Holy Spirit that lives within me will be in full control, that as your word go forth, burdens will be removed, yokes will be destroyed, your people will be delivered and set free. But most of all, I want to thank you for the lost souls that will be saved. Open our ears to hear and our hearts to receive what thus says the Lord. And we thank you in advance for all that you're going to do through the power of your word. And we ask it all in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Are you in Ephesians, the third chapter? And we'll be, we're going to begin at verse 20. Ephesians, the third chapter, verse 20. It says, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, worlds without end. Amen. That's rich. I want you to just think about that for a minute. I'm going to read it again. It says, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory by the church, in the church, by Christ Jesus, you are all ages, world without ends. Amen. Settle, done, finish. The subject of today's message is God can do more. God can do more. Turn to your neighbor and tell them God can do more. Hallelujah. I want to start today's message with a story about the great evangelist D.L. Moody. He was an American evangelist, a publisher who founded the Moody Church, Northfield School, and Mount Hermon School in Massachusetts, and Moody Bible Institute. He was a man whose life was used mightily in the body of Christ. And on his deathbed, he called his family together, and it's reported that his final words to them was, if your partner is God, make big plans. He was dying, and his last words to his family, if your partner is God, make big plans. He believed in the power of God and the lives of his people, and it was so important to him that this was the message that he wanted to leave with them. If your partner is God, make the plans. If you're a believer in the body of Christ, then God is your partner. We serve a big God, the God of the impossibility, the God who is able to do in and through us what seems to be impossible. So I want you to dream big dreams. I want you to plan big plans. And I want you to pray big prayers. God can do exceeding abundantly and above all that we can imagine or think. And it's through the power that worketh in us. Now I want you to notice that Paul is telling us here in this third chapter of Ephesians that he's praying for them. And Paul says, I'm praying because I want the eyes of your understanding to be open. I want God to give you revelation, knowledge, and wisdom. And I want God to strengthen you in the inner man because you're going to need that strength. All that God wants to do in and through your life 
The enemy will come after you, so you're going to need to be strengthened in your inner man. And then Paul tells him, and I'm praying that you will be rooted and grounded in love. Hallelujah. Because you represent God, and you need to be operating in the God kind of love. Glory be to God. He said, and I want Christ to dwell in your hearts by faith. Paul is telling them, I want you to really, really understand the incredible greatness of God's power that's available to operate in you. Subject of our lesson today, God can do more. If God is your partner, Start with your prayer life. That's where you begin. And begin to pray big prayers and watch God move in your life. Let me ask you something. What is your prayer life like? What's your prayer life like? Have it become routine that you pray and you get up and you say, Lord, thank you for this day. I thank you for my family. God, I pray your protection over us as we are out and about and in the car as we're driving. Protect my family. Protect me. God, bless our food and keep us healthy. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with that prayer. That's a good prayer. But is that all for real? We serve a big God. Is that all? Is that the end of your prayers? That should, be, that should be the beginning of your prayers. Hallelujah. Because God can do more. We serve a big God. We serve a God who is able, well able to do what no other can do. And when you think about how big our God is, just think about what the word tells us. It says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and they that dwell therein. Cattle on a thousand hills belong to him. Even the hills are his. And he said, the silver and the gold, it all belonged to him. That sounds like totality of ownership to me. And we serve a big God, and God can do more in us and through us. Let me give you this example. Paul wants us to, not, to come out of our comfort zone and stop praying these little prayers. But step out in faith and get a big vision of what God can do and what God wants to do in your life. You're the light of the world. You are a city that sit on a hill that cannot be healed. You represent the almighty God. And we don't serve a little God. We serve a big God. And God is able to do more than you can imagine or think. Let's think about this for a minute. And this is an analogy. What if Bill Gates came here to the sanctuary to love of Christ worship center? And Bill Gates is the founder of Microsoft Corporation. His net worth is $114.7 billion. I know, fact check. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Just wrap your mind, around, your mind around that for a minute. And what if he came in to our service and he came up and he said, I want to bless you all. So at the end of the service, I'm going to be standing outside. And whatever it is that you need, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to bless you with it. You will get excited. <laughs> Many of us will be doing this. <laughs> We're going to get out. We're going to be the first in line. So we don't even wait until the service is over. And you get in line, and Mr. Gates says, what can I do for you? And you tell him, you say, well, I need you to pay my mortgage, and my son need a pair of shoes. If you could really just bless me with about $35,000, I'd really, really appreciate that. And that would just get me through. I should be able to make it the rest of the year. If you could just manage to do that for me. He'll probably look at you and say, hmm, okay, I can do that. And then the next person comes along and says, well, you know what? I don't need that much. $10,000 are getting me you for the next couple of weeks, and I would be just so grateful if you could do that. 
he would probably look and say, hmm, okay. And I can just imagine he would ask the question, do you know who I am? Do you know my name is Bill Gates? Do you know what I'm capable of doing? Do you know what I can do for you today or anything that you ask, I could give it to you? You know, I think God feels like that sometimes. Bill Gates could bless us. He's a rich man, but it does not compare. It's not even in the same category of what our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ can do for us. And God is saying, dream big dreams, plan big thoughts, pray big prayers. I can do all of that and more. Amen. We serve a big God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We serve the God of impossibilities that can do in and everything that we ask him to do. So let's get a revelation of that today. That is nothing, nothing impossible with God. Jesus himself said in Luke, the 18th chapter, verse 27, he said, the things which are impossible with man are possible with God. The things that are impossible with man are possible with God. So when you pray, pray in faith, believe in God for what seems impossible in the natural. Because your prayers, when you pray, you must pray in faith and believe God can answer your prayers. So I want, you, I want to really encourage your hearts today. I want you to get a revelation of God. Get a revelation of his ability and his power that's available to work, work and to operate in you. God can do more, exceedingly, abundantly more than you could ask or think. You know, what have you asked God to do for you that seemed impossible? And you might be wondering, can God really do this? Can he really bring me out? You know, we've all experienced times of feeling like we're at a place of absolutely impossibility. And unless God does something, we're doomed. We feel like that. But when you pray for what you think is impossible, you have not scratched the surface of what God can do. Get a revelation of that. You think it's impossible but you haven't scratched the surface of what God can do. God is saying, I can do that and I can do more. Believe for the impossible. Pray bigger prayers, plan bigger plans, and expect bigger. By faith, God can and will accomplish things in and through you. If only you can believe for the impossible, God can do more. We're at a time in our country, throughout the world, there are pandemics with an S. Medical pandemic, social pandemic. Some are going through spiritual pandemic. Racial injustice throughout. But I want to encourage your hearts today. Nothing is too hard for God. God can bring us out of what we are going through today. He can bring us out wiser, stronger, and better. Hallelujah. God can do it. So I want you to set your expectations higher. The prayer that Paul prayed for the church at Ephesus is he wanted them to really understand, to get a revelation of God's power and God's ability or what he can do and will do. So as you pray, let your prayers begin to invoke the greatness of God and end your prayers with praising the greatness of God. Paul says your prayers are not big enough. They're not big enough. Pray big prayers. God wants you to pray transforming, life-transforming prayers. 
So you might be asking the question, Pastor Mabel, what are you talking about? Life transforming prayers. That's a good question and I'm glad you asked. Transforming prayers are prayers that make a difference. Prayers that change situations and circumstances in every area of our lives. Transforming prayers can change our country and it can change our world. That's what I'm talking about when we go to God with believing God to do what seems like cannot be done in the natural. We're looking at a pandemic, a medical pandemic, and it seems as if they're not going to come up with anything for us. But I'm here to tell you that we serve a God that is capable, more than able, to bring us out of the situation and the challenges that we're going through in this nation and throughout the world. God can do it. And God can do more. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. If ever there was a time that we need prayer, that time is now. And Paul is encouraging us today that God can do more in and through you. And it's by his power, God's power, that's at work in you. So what I want you to do, think bigger, pray bigger, plan bigger, and expect bigger. Hallelujah. We serve a big God. Let's, let's not forget who we are dealing with. We're talking about the God of the universe the one who created the heavens and the earth. Let's not forget who we are dealing with. God wants us to come to him, not with just little prayers and little dreams. We serve a big God, and we go to God in faith, expecting and believing that God shall and will bring it to pass. Hebrews 11 and 1 tells us that now faith is the confidence, the assurance of that which you hope for. And then he tells us in Hebrews 11 and 6, apart from faith, it's impossible to believe God. Apart from faith, it's impossible to believe him because the scripture says, he that cometh to him must believe and believe that he is a rewarder of those that seek him, a rewarder of those that come to him in faith, a rewarder of those that come to him with the spirit of anticipation, thanking and praising God that it's already done. That's what we're talking about today. That's the kind of God that we serve. You see, to develop your faith, start by making the decision that God's word is true and that you will believe his word above anything else. The word of God is actually God speaking to you. It's God breathed. Is God inspired and is God indwelt? God's word must be of foremost importance to you. Wrap yourself in God's word and in his promises. That's going to build the faith in you that you need to believe for the impossible. Let's expand our vision of who God is and what his purposes are and what he wants us to pray for. Amen. See, God wants us to pray for more than just you, your foe, I know foe, and no more. He wants us to have worldwide prayers, transforming prayers, reaching out to the lost and the hurting and interceding for them. This is what God wants us to do. And it will be through studying his word that you'll get a greater understanding of how big our God is. He is the God of impossibility. God is able to do exceeding, abundant, a more than you could ask or think. So I want to encourage you today, stop thinking small. Stop planning small. Stop praying small prayers and begin to expect God to do in and through you those things that seem to be impossible. Put a demand upon the anointing of God. When you go to God, God demands that you come to him in faith. And when you pray in faith, what, what seems to be impossible to believe for, looking at situations and issues that seem impossible, but when you have faith, knowing that you serve a big God and that God is well able to bring it to pass. Turn with me to Jeremiah 32 and 17. 
It says, behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? That's very, Jeremiah 32 and 17. Excuse me. That's Jeremiah 32 and 27. But now let me back up. I want you to read Jeremiah 32 and 17, where it says, O oh Lord God, is it, it is you who have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arms, and nothing is too hard for you. Nothing. Just think about this. You are the God that stretched out the heavens. You have the power. You spoke creation into existence. If you want to get a revelation of just how big our God is, walk outside and just look around at creation. Look up at the sun. At night, the moon, the stars. Look at the trees. Look at God's creation. We serve a big God. And the scriptures are saying nothing is too hard for God. Dream big, pray big prayers, and expect big things. You know, you can expect God to do what has never been done. If you look in Luke, Satan is alive, this will stay on, hallelujah. Go with me to Luke, the first chapter, verse 17. And this is going to give you a revelation of just how big our God is and for what God can do. Here's a situation in Luke, the first chapter, verse 17, that seems impossible. In Luke, the first chapter, verse 17, Luke, the first chapter, verse 37. I stand corrected, I'm sorry. The angel of the Lord comes to Mary, and he tells Mary that she's going to give birth to a son, even though she'd never been touched by a man. And Mary is puzzled, and she's asking, how can this be? And the angel explains to her what's going to happen. And Mary says to the angel, be it unto me according to thy word. Don't miss that. The angel came to Mary. Here's a situation that seems impossible for a woman to conceive and have a child and have never been touched by a man. But when the angel of the Lord gives Mary a word from the Lord, Mary received that word by faith. And she says, be it unto me according to your word. So whenever God's word comes to you and God asks you to do something that seems impossible, can you be like Mary? and accept that word by faith and believe it and stand on it. Believe it by faith and receive it. See, everything that we receive from God is by faith. We're talking about a God of the impossibilities that is able to do exceeding, abundantly, but above, far above, far beyond all that you can imagine or think. And all of the promises that we receive from God are received by faith. Let's look at Jeremiah, the 10th chapter. What God did for Jeremiah was something that had never been done before. And it was something that, had never, that has never been done since. We're talking about the God of impossibilities. We're talking about a God that can do more than you can imagine or think or wrap your mind around. Many things that God come to you with, it won't make sense, but it'll make faith. And you receive it how? By faith. In Jeremiah, the 10th chapter, Jeremiah was getting ready to go against 10 armies, five armies impossible to win. No way he could defeat all of these armies. There were five kings that came together to defeat the army of Israel. Jeremiah, Joshua went to God 
and Joshua prayed. And God told Joshua in Joshua 10 and 8, he told him, he said, don't be afraid of them, for I have handed them over to you. No man, none of them, no one of them, not one of them will be able to come against you. Now I want you to back up to Joshua, the first chapter and the fifth verse. God told Joshua when he called him to lead the children of Israel into the promised land, he told Joshua, he said, be encouraged. No man will be able to stand against you. This is what he told him when he first called him. So here in Joshua, the 10th chapter, God is repeating that to Joshua. That says to me that whatever God promised you, regardless to how long it's been, God will bring it to pass. God is a covenant keeping God. If God said it, God can do it and God can do more. So he's telling Joshua the same thing in chapter 10 that he told him in chapter one. He said, you've already won this battle. In other words, no man is gonna be able to stand against you. Joshua goes into battle against five kings and against five armies, and they are winning the battle because God is on his side. God is raining down hail storms from heaven in this battle, and it's getting late. Joshua doesn't want to fight these during the night. So Joshua goes to God, and Joshua prays a prayer that seems impossible. Joshua prays to God, he says, let the sun stand over the city and let the moon stand in its place. And the word of God says, the sun and the moon did not move until the Israel army had finished the destruction of the enemy. The sun stopped in the heavens and stayed there for almost 24 hours. Is that the impossible? Is that believing God for what has never been done before that seemed to be impossible to come to pass? He prayed for the sun to stop. Joshua said, it's getting dark and I don't wanna have to fight this battle during the night where I really can't see the enemy coming after me. And he prayed to God to let the sun stand still. And the word of God said that the sun stood still for almost 24 hours. Guess what? That has never been done before, and it has never been done since. That's what we are talking about when we said that we serve a God who is able to do exceeding, abundant, above, far beyond all that we can imagine or think. God can do. Whatever you ask God to do, God is saying, I can do that, and I can do more. That's what we're talking about. We serve a God of impossibilities. And I wanna give you one more um, example of an impossible situation. And that's in Acts, the third chapter, verses one through 12. In the beginning in that first verse, Acts, the third chapter, beginning in the first verse, it says, now Peter and John went up into the temple went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate. The temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked in arms. Then Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And scripture says in verse seven, that he took him by the right hand and lifted him up and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he went into the temple, walking, leaping, 
jumping and praising God. There, here is a man that had never walked a day in his life, lame from his mother's womb. He depended upon people to take care of him, to bring him to the temple to sit outside to beg, ask people to help him, to give him money. This was the way he survived. He came to the temple this day expecting the same thing that he got every day. But this day would be a day that would change his life for the rest of his life. And Peter and John is going into the temple and they see him and they tell the man, look on us. In other words, don't look down, don't look around, look up, look up at us. We got something for you. And it's better than what you asked for. Silver and gold, we don't have. But such as I have, I give thee. What is it that Peter and John had that they was gonna give this man? What did they have? God, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ gave them power and authority to lay hands on the sick and to cast out demons. So what is he saying? I'm going to give you what Jesus has given to me. I want you to look upon me. I'm going to give you your healing today. You're going to get up and you're going to walk from this day forward. He said, look on me. Look up. Look at us. And he said, in the name. It's always in the name. Hallelujah. It's all about the name. There's power in the name. There's healing in the name. There's deliverance in the name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So when we go forth teaching, preaching, laying hands on the sick and casting out demons, we start with in the name because that's where the power is at. In the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. I'm shouting myself happy. I'm getting a little bit excited about this message because there are so many things that I want God to do in my life that if I looked at them in the natural, they would seem impossible. But this is encouraging me. God can. Hallelujah. He said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. The Bible says immediately, immediately, not later, but right then, that he got strength in his bones, in his ankles, in his legs, and they helped him up, and he jumped up leaping and shouting and praising God. How many of you know when God deliver you that you need to give him the honor, the glory, and the praise? How many of you know when God deliver you, you need to go out and tell the world what God has done for you and let them know what God has done for me. God will do the same for you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God can do more, much more than you can ask or think. So when you dream your biggest dream, when you make your biggest plans, expecting God is saying, yes, I can do that and I can do more. I can do that and I can do more. My time is up and I want to leave this with you. If you remember nothing else that I said today, I want to leave with you. I want you to think bigger thoughts. I want you to pray bigger prayers. And I want you to expect more from God, who can do exceedingly far above and beyond all of your wildest dreams. When you have stretched yourself to the limits in what you can believe God for, you have not scratched the surface of what my God can do. God can do more. Hallelujah. Do you receive it? Thank you, Lord. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. To my audience, if you're watching or if you're here and you have not accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, I want to give you that opportunity now. God can do more in and through you in your life than you can dream or anticipate. But it starts with you accepting him as your personal Lord and Savior. So I want to give you that opportunity right now. Pray the prayer after me. Lord, I'm a sinner. 
in need of a savior, come into my heart, save me now. I believe that Jesus died for my sins and that he rose on the third day, seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding for me. Come into my heart and save me now. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Those words that you just spoke out of your mouth, if you believed it in your heart, you are now saved. Hallelujah. And let me be the first to welcome you to the body of Christ. This is the best day of the rest of your life. Glory be to God. I want to encourage you. If you're not in the Aurora, Naperville area, that you can be a part of our services. We would love to have you. But we want you to get into a good Bible teaching church that you can grow in the things of God and go on and be all that God has created you to be. God bless you. Hallelujah.